Welcome to the latest Excursion on Rails, a series of screencasts supporting learning Rails. Um, today we're going to install Instant Rails, as you can probably guess by what's showing in Internet Explorer. Instant Rails is a all-in-one package for Microsoft Windows. I'm going to be installing it on Vista. Uh, the good news about Instant Rails is that it gives you everything you need in one neat package. Uh, the bad news about Instant Rails is that the last release of it came out in December of 2007. Uh, it does include Rails 2.0, and you can certainly get up and going with it, um, but it doesn't look like, in the long run, this is your best choice. Um, since learning Rails is about getting started and about learning Rails, um, it's definitely still worth exploring. So to get started, you'll go to the Instant Rails site, instantrails.rubyforge.org, and you'll see there's a nice download link here. So we'll click that and get started. Uh, we're going to want the zip file, and I'll put it in Administrator Downloads. It's going to take a nice long time to come down, so while we're waiting for the file, we're going to take a look at something important on unzip problems. Um, I've had problems unzipping Instant Rails because the file uh, names get really, really long. Uh, what I tend to do is rename the zip file when it arrives to something like IR or IR2, um, and then I unzip it that way, and it seems to work all right. So uh, we're waiting now for the um, for the download, and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, we've downloaded the files. Uh, you can see here, Administrator Downloads, there's an Instant Rails 2.0 Win zip file. Um, as I mentioned before, you're going to want to rename that to something short. I'll just give it IR as a name. And then we will uncompress the files, right click, extract all. Uh, I'm just going to use the Windows extractor, it should should work all right and then it'll get to work extracting it'll take a little while it's a 69 megabyte zip file so I'll return in just a moment when it's done once the unzipping operation is complete Windows just opens up a directory showing me what I've unzipped uh, as you can see in here uh, there's an Apache directory for the Apache server there's a MySQL directory a PHP directory uh, Ruby of course and down here is where you're going to find the actual Instant Rails application. Okay, so once we have it uh, unzipped, it's time to actually open it and take a look at what we have. Um, Vista is going to be very cheerful for a little while. Um, this publisher cannot be verified. Are you sure you want to run this? Um, if you want to run Instant Rails regularly, turn off, always ask. Um, this is not particularly secure software. Uh, Instant Rails wants to know about uh, its configuration files having moved from where it was originally built. Just say OK. And we should get more warnings in a minute. Well, Apache started. MySQL is pending. We're just waiting here. How many messages are we going to get? Okay, Windows Firewall has blocked some features of this program. Apache, not really a dangerous program in this context, so we'll unblock it. There's more coming. Or there should be. Or maybe we'll have to restart to get MySQL to work. Hmm. Okay. We're going to close Instant Rails. Do you really want to quit? We'll hit yes. That should turn everything off. And now we'll try starting it up again and see if it does any better with less interference. Yep, there we go. MySQL and Apache are started. Uh, it just took a second try to make it actually work. Okay, so this is really just a uh, status window and you you know, need to do more than this to, to actually build an application. Um, to do that, basically all of this functionality is lurking under this eye icon. So if you click on that, you'll see more options. You can manage your Rails applications, you can set configuration for the different components, uh, you have access to the log files, 
Uh, you can do the critical restart and stop servers if you're having trouble. Um, and there's also some basic uh, help available as well. So for right now, we'll go to Manage Rails Applications, which brings up a, a window with a couple of applications in it. Um, none of them are particularly uh, important to the demonstration we're doing, but um, you can create a new Rails application, which you'll see um, actually just brings you to a command prompt and doesn't create a new Rails application. That's up to you, but it's fortunately very simple. So this command prompt is specially configured. You can actually just create a Rails application here using the same command line tools as you'll use for Rails in a normal installation. Um, I should point out though that if you just open a regular Windows command prompt, you're not going to find any of your Rails tools available. So to get going, we'll just type uh, Rails hello. And as you'll see, Rails is going to generate a whole pile of files eventually. There it goes. Just had to give up on it, kind of. Um, and if we go back to the window here, hit refresh list, we can see that our hello application is one of them. Um, we can go ahead and just hit start with mongrel. It'll open another command prompt to get it going. And again, we have to unblock things so that uh, so that Windows will let them actually come through. So to see our application, we'll fire up Internet Explorer. And Internet Explorer will let us visit our site um, at the 127.0.0.1.3000, which is also localhost, port 3000. And sure enough, we have the welcome aboard message that you're supposed to get when you start up Rails. Um, we haven't actually created anything yet, but we do at least have evidence that Rails is running. Um, before I move on, I should also mention that I've had frequent problems with Vista where it doesn't want to let things run even after you've unblocked them, and that the usual routine for me has been to stop everything, quit the application, and start up again. Um, it seems to go away once you've been running uh, Instant Rails like more than twice. Somehow the unblocking just has to get set in. So anyway, we have things going. Uh, now it's time to figure out you know how to integrate our own commands with the uh, the Rails application. To do this, we're going to uh, use the examples 2.1 and 2.2 from Learning Rails. Um, the easiest way to to do that um, is just to download the uh, example code, which is available from the Excursions on Rails site or from O'Reilly. Um, it's just a zip file, and we'll save that. Downloads is as good a place as any other. And once we have the files downloaded, we're just going to unzip them, and then we're going to look for um, a convenient place to cut and paste from. The documents we'll want are in the Learning Rails Code zip file you just downloaded. So to get that open, we'll hit Extract All, and we'll just put it in the Learning Rails Code directory, and we'll have it start. And there are a lot of files in there, mostly because they're from the Rails uh, generated code. Um, this will take a moment, so I'll be right back with the uh, extracted code. Okay, so we have a new directory here, Learning Rails Code. Uh, we'll open it, and inside you'll find Code Export, which is the directory containing all of the code that we've gotten out of Learning Rails. Um, the directories listed by chapter have complete examples in them. Um, probably the easiest place for us to work from in this example, though, is to go to code, for, code Direct from Book. And you can see that these are also sorted by chapter. Uh, what they are is the extraction of all of the code in any form, examples or just demonstration bits, uh, from the chapters in Learning Rails. Uh, the one that we want is Chapter 2. And uh, to get the line endings right, it's easiest to open it in WordPad. So, as you can see, the chapter name is Rails on the Web. You can see some pieces that were, you know, unlabeled examples. Um, this first example here is example 2.1 from uh, Learning Rails, and this one is example 2.2. Our purpose here is going to be to replace a file that contains uh, the, figure, the example 2.1 code with the example 2.2 code. First, though, we have to go back to Instant Rails to... Um, to generate the code that we're going to replace. 
you don't need to create a new Rails app this time. You just need to open a console. You don't want to open a Rails console because that's something very different that will actually run your application and let you tweak it with Ruby. Uh, so we'll close this. We'll come back to this I menu. And under Rails applications, we want to open a Ruby console window, not a Rails console window. This brings us back to a window like we had when we created the application and gives us the opportunity to you know, run command line uh, commands. So we're going to change directories, cd hello, into the directory containing our application. And now we're going to issue a script generate command uh, that follows along with the one in, in chapter 2. It, we're going to generate a controller, and we're going to call it hello, and it's going to have a method called index. And after a few moments, it will generate uh, some files for us. It'll generate both a view and a controller. Um, you can't actually generate views directly, even though it seems like that would be the easiest way to work uh, from an HTML-centric perspective. Uh, you have to generate a controller, and then it'll give you a view along the way. Now, we could just use the command line to visit those directories and modify the files directly. Um, but one thing that's interesting about Rails applications is that they're actually frequently easier to understand when you see them in a directory view. And Instant Rails will let you do this. The challenge is, where is my directory? It's under a lot of different, uh, lot of different subdirectories. So the easy way to get there is just to hit Open Windows Explorer from the I menu in Instant Rails under Rails Applications. And sure enough, up comes the tree view. And in the hello uh, directory, we have the app config, the usual files for Rails. But it's probably easier actually to come down and use the tree view here because we need pieces in several different uh, directories. So we created something in app controllers and something in app views. Now for this first example, we're just going to go to views, which you can see has a hello directory in it, which is where we're going to find our target index.html.erb is the file that we created from the command line. Uh, Windows doesn't really have any idea how to open this file, and for purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to tell it to use WordPad again. Um, undoubtedly, you'll want to use something a little more, uh, a little more exciting as you get really going, but uh, for now, this will work. And you can see here the same content that we had in the Chapter 2 example. Uh, the default contents of index.html.erb. It's nice to see that this corresponds with what we expected from the book, but it's probably also worth checking to know that Rails is actually seeing it. Uh, so we'll go back to 127.0.0.13000 and we'll go to hello. Um, because it's a controller, it should come up under that name, and indeed it does. Uh, that's just a rendering of the HTML contained in the file. So for our very simple first start, we're just going to replace the HTML here with the HTML from example 2.2 and make that an initial greeting. It's just a little bit different. It's not really that incredibly different. Um, we'll save it and we'll go and we will reload this. And as you can see, we're in development mode, so Rails picked up our change that we made to the view um, and made it into the new uh, output sent to users. Now displaying HTML that we just cut and pasted in isn't very exciting, so we're at least going to demonstrate that you can get data in from one file and over to another one. Um, to do this, we're going to go back to our application directories, but this time, under Hello App, we're going to go to Controllers. And there's a hello controller file here. Um, it's a Ruby file. Windows isn't real clear on what to do with it, so we're going to tell Windows explicitly what to do with it. And again, we're going to give it uh, the option of WordPad, which is unexciting but does the job when you're getting started. And we'll apply that. We'll hit OK. And now we'll open that. And here you can see the default code that's in example 2.3 of Learning Rails. Um, but we want to replace it with something more exciting, so we'll go back to chapter 2 again, our sample file downloaded from the web. 
And here's a controller, the next example, that actually sets some variables. And we'll switch back to the actual controller file. We'll select all. We'll paste this in. Take a look here quickly. We're setting a message of hello. Uh, we're setting a count variable that we don't actually use yet, but you will use eventually. And a bonus message. Um, these are instance variables prefaced with an at sign, and they will be available to the view. So our next step is going to be making the view actually do something with these. So we'll go back to this index.html uh, .erb file. Windows is hiding the extension on me. And we'll go to the next example, and we'll copy in code that does just a little bit more. And as you can see, it uses the message variable. This is called ERB. This percent equals means that it will incorporate the contents of the message variable. The same thing will happen in the headline. And then down here, we're going to do the same thing, but with the bonus text. So if we save this, switch back to Internet Explorer, and hit Reload, we'll get something slightly different. The this message came from the controller is the bonus variable. That tells us something different. And hello is now uh, coming from the at message variable in both the title and in the text. So at this point, uh, Instant Rails is off and running. Um, it may not be uh, doing anything all that exciting. You're probably going to want to configure a lot more pieces uh, to give yourself a more comfortable editing and working environment. But at this point, you can actually do basic Rails stuff and have a working environment to show it in.